The new Android 10 might not come with any sweet treat nickname attached, but that doesn't make the new release any less important. We still have a whole new version of Android to get stuck into, this is the version that will be shipping on just about every new Android phone for the next year. Android 10 is more of a refinement than a huge visual overhaul, but it does bring big changes to navigation, notifications and privacy, as well as telegraphing some of the features we can expect from the Pixel 4 phones this fall. For more Pixel 4 goodness in future be sure to subscribe, in the meantime I'm Alex from Android Central and this is our review of Android Android 10. So let's begin with the biggest feature change of all. Android's gesture navigation is drastically different in Android Q. You can still use Android's old 3 button navigation if you want, and on Pixel phones there's also a version of the 2 button navigation that we first saw on the Pixel 3 last year. But the big new change is the addition of fully gestural navigation, which frees up almost all of the screen for your apps and content. As before you can swipe up to view a predictive row of apps, and scroll through your recent apps, or swipe up further to go straight into the app drawer. But the way you swipe between apps now works much more like iOS, with apps retaining their place in the list when you hop between them. Back in Android Pie, quickly switching to a new app would immediately bump it to the top of the stack. For the most part, this all works pretty well, and sure, you lose a portion of the screen to the navigation bar in some apps, but visually it is an improvement on what was there before. To account for the new smaller navigation bar, you now get these weird corner frame things for activating the Google Assistant. Simply swipe diagonally inward to launch your Assistant. And the manual screen rotation toggle has been changed to this floating button, which you'll see if you don't have auto rotation turned on. That's mostly good, however throughout the Android Q beta program the new back gesture has been contentious among Android fans because of its potential to interfere with sliding menus in certain apps, for instance Slack or the Google Play Store here. Google's answer is to allow an exclusion area in certain apps, that's an area of space at the side of the screen where the back gesture can't be triggered. It's also possible to peek and hold to activate so-called hamburger menus in Android 10, but this doesn't always work reliably. So this is going to be a bit of a pain point for early adopters of the new version until apps are updated for Android 10. At least if you hate it there are other navigation options available, and you can control the sensitivity of the back gesture too which is nice. Plus we can expect other Android phone makers to give users a choice in navigation when new phones start to ship on Android 10, just like we saw in Android Pie. Next is something that's long been requested by the Android community, a dedicated system-wide dark mode. We've seen this in individual apps before, but in version 10 it's a single option that applies to every app on your phone, provided it's been updated for Android 10. And even in the early days of Android 10 we can see this already built into most of Google's apps. Why is it here? Well, some people find the dark theme to be easier on the eyes, and because of the way OLED screens work, a dark theme can also help you save power and extend your battery life. The only downside is for non-Google apps you'll have to wait for the app developer to patch in support for the dark theme. We've seen hints that a future Pixel UI update might add more direct theming or colour customization controls, similar to what you can do in a OnePlus phone right now. It's not live just yet though, so perhaps we'll have to wait for the Pixel 4 series for those features to arrive. While we're talking about the Pixel UI, it's worth pointing out some small changes even if Google's interface hasn't been completely overhauled in this new version. Google Sans, that's the Google font, has been spread even more throughout the UI, including the system clock and the notification panel. Album art is now blurred when it appears on the lock screen, making things a bit easier to read. Google's always on ambient display has been redesigned to show more information, like the artist and track when a music app is playing. The settings app has been tweaked, making it easier to toggle relevant settings without drilling down through multiple layers of menus for things like Wi-Fi. Speaking of Wi-Fi, the new version also adds an optional high performance Wi-Fi mode that games can use for higher priority connectivity and less lag. Meanwhile, sharing Wi-Fi networks to other devices is easier than ever, with this new option to share network details via a QR code. On Pixel phones, haptic feedback has been improved too, with firm short taps for highlighting text, and a new soft vibration when you plug in the phone to charge. And when you're not charging, Android 10 can show you how long your battery is going to last in the top right corner, to help you manage your battery life more intelligently. That's instead of just showing you the percentage readout up there. Plus you can also choose to activate battery saver mode based on your usage patterns, not just based on that battery percentage. And finally, this isn't just a Pixel thing, but Android's sharing menu has been overhauled to be much faster, while also giving you a more consistent list of contacts and apps. One way you won't be able to share on Android 10 however is over Android Beam. 
The NFC-based sharing standard, first launched with Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich way back in 2011, has been removed from the new version on Pixel phones. It's possible other manufacturers may keep it around when their phones are updated, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Privacy is another major focus in Android 10, so now there's a new privacy menu bringing together everything from notifications on your lock screen to ad preferences. By far the biggest part of Android 10's new privacy features is the new Permission Manager, which makes it easy to see which apps have access to your stuff. For perhaps the most sensitive information of all, Google has brought in changes that make it easier to see when apps are using your location. The first time an app asks for your location, you can deny, allow, or only allow it when the app is open. It's a much needed change because obviously there's a big difference between an app needing your permission once or twice while you're using it, and being able to constantly track you in the background. Also, to cut down on the number of apps using that location permission, Android 10 has a new dedicated permission for activity tracking designed for health and fitness apps. What's also really handy is being able to choose a permission and then see which apps have access to it. So if you come across something that doesn't quite look right, you can easily go in and change things up. Plus, while we're talking about keeping tabs on bad apps, the new version also stops apps from launching activities in the background, meaning it's harder for malicious apps to just conjure themselves up automatically. For apps that need to show things like full screen call alerts, they can use a new type of full screen notification. Google's ongoing refinement of Android's notification system continues in Android 10, with some obvious and not so obvious changes. All messaging apps can now use Google's predictive Smart Replies feature, which was first introduced back on Android Oreo, and that's been expanded with Smart Actions for things like quickly opening a link in a message. Media player apps like YouTube now get their own progress bar controls, letting you jump to a specific point in a song or video without opening the app. This handy chime icon lets you see which app just buzzed your phone. Meanwhile, silent notifications are grouped together down below in their own area of the notification panel. There's also a redesigned menu for controlling notifications, making it easier to force apps to silently notify you or disable notifications from certain apps altogether. It's all about putting you in control of what is a potentially very distracting side of smartphone use. With that in mind, it's no surprise to see this new notification menu in Android 10. Similar to the permissions menu, it lets you see exactly how often apps are notifying you, so if something's blowing up your phone over and over again with alerts, this can let you track down the offending app. It gets pretty detailed, and you can even drill down and view things by notification channel. The launch of Android 10 marks the first anniversary of Google's Digital Wellbeing Initiative, and this is expanded even further in the new version to help you strike a healthy balance of screen time. Digital Wellbeing's app timers are now built into the recent apps menu, so you can see how much time you've got left in an app before opening it. And in an update to Digital Wellbeing coming soon, the new Focus Mode will let you use your phone with fewer distractions. This lets you identify apps that are likely to distract you, then enabling Focus Mode will freeze these apps. When it's available, you'll be able to launch Focus Mode via a tile in the Quick Settings panel. And on that subject, there are a few promised features in Android 10 that aren't live just yet, and which we may have to actually wait for the Pixel 4 before we see them fully launched. One of these is Live Transcribe, shown here at Google I.O. 2019. Live Transcribe is similar to the feature on YouTube which generates automatic captions for videos, so imagine that except running on your phone at all times and active for any kind of audio or video content. That's obviously a huge deal for people with hearing difficulties, as well as anyone who's ever forgotten their headphones. That's the promise of Live Transcribe, which you can probably expect to see debut on the Pixel 4. And also when the Pixel 4 launches, it'll have Google's new, upgraded, and much faster assistant, with commands processed in real time on your phone. Google gave a really impressive demo of this back at I.O. 2019. So expect the Pixel 4 to be a launch device, followed by other phones running Android 10 in the months ahead. The Pixel 4 should also take advantage of Android 10's new APIs for face recognition, which are documented on the Android developer site, but not in use on the current Pixels because they don't have the hardware for secure face unlock. Expect the array of sensors on the Pixel 4's sizable forehead to help out on that front. At the same time, the new OS-level support for depth maps in photos in Android 10 should go hand-in-hand -hand with the expected dual-lens camera around the back of the Pixel 4 should also help out phones like the Huawei Mate 30, which is expected to pack a formidable camera setup of its own and also launch on Android Q. While we're talking crazy future phones, Android 10 is the first version to natively support foldable phones. Obviously, both major foldables announced thus far, the Samsung Galaxy Fold and Huawei Mate X, have been dogged by many months of delays, and who knows which version of Android each of these will actually ship with. 
In any case, once Android 10 arrives, they'll benefit from native support for resizing apps and intelligently splitting the screen between multiple apps once the device is opened out. But arguably more important than any of that stuff is something that you can't really see beyond this single line in the About page. This is Project Mainline, Google's latest effort to speed up the deployment of Android updates. Building off the work already done in Project Treble to make Android more modular, Mainline lets device makers update individual components of Android without having to push out a full firmware update. What does that mean? Well, hopefully devices with Android 10 should see faster turnaround times for important bug fixes and security improvements. That's because all this stuff can be updated via the Google Play Store without needing a full firmware update. To wheel out an oft-repeated cliché, Android 10 is greater than the sum of its parts. It's one of those updates that changes a lot of small things for the better, and in doing so, elevates the polish of what was already a very mature and reliable mobile OS. The major themes here are twofold, putting you back in control of your phone and all its various distractions, and making it easier to see what your apps are doing with your data. Ironically, the one area where some polish is lacking is arguably Android 10's most noticeable new feature for regular users, the new gesture controls. Expect the mixed reception this feature has seen throughout the beta program to continue once it hits more devices. In any case, with the traditional Android Sweet Treat monikers finally consigned to history and new Android branding being rolled out by Google, with Android 10, we're turning the page on a very long chapter in Android's history. That's it for now, stay tuned for more on Android 10 when it hits other devices in the months ahead, and subscribe so you don't miss all of our future coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.